I think the issue of how people feel is relevant only in as much as it determines how people act. Wringing our hands and 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 crying and and feeling uh, shame and humiliation has been a huge part of the reaction that many non-indigenous people have expressed as they have learned about this. But they also realize, and we have certainly been insistent in saying this, we can't stop with that. We have to now, now that we know, what do we do about all this? And I think the thing that um, has been the, the greatest learning curve, because everyone wants to believe, well, this had nothing to do with me. I wasn't part of that. The fact is that we live in a country where we are all bound by our laws. We are all affected directly or indirectly by government policies. And we are all deemed to be citizens within this country. And so everything that happens to one or some has a bearing on all of us. Um, in this case, uh, one of the common reactions that we hear, especially from the young people, because we've made a very intentional effort to reach out to high school students and to have them learn about this history, engage with survivors and so on, those young people are mad. They are upset that they have learned about trouble spots in so many other parts of the world, conflicts in so many other parts of the world, but they have not been taught a complete history of what happened in our own country. But having said that, what's really encouraging is that they want to know, and they immediately uh, see the unfairness of it, the unjustness of it, and they immediately talk about what they are going to do, what they're going to do and go home and tell their parents, uh, what they're going to do if they see something uh, unfair, what they deem to be uh, unjust happening to someone um, in their daily living. And so that's really good. And I think that is the, the, so the feeling part is valuable in that it is transformative. If we start to know more than we knew before, then we can start to shift our attitudes about things that we thought we knew before, but in fact may have been misinformed. And then we can start to shift um, then our actions that flow from those attitudes. And I think that uh, the goodness of Canadians is what will determine what becomes of all of this. I think people have a very deep sense of, of wanting to believe in, in good values within our country. It is the reputation that we've taken into the world about ourselves. And now it is our home challenge to live up to that in our own country. And I think that's, as I say, it's not about how you feel. It's about figuring out what can I do. We have said repeatedly that the uh, most essential thing to understand about all of this history is that it involves, it, it implicates all of us, and that reconciliation, that part of our mandate that is about inspiring reconciliation, it's not about addressing problems in Aboriginal communities and sort of getting Aboriginal people to figure out how to solve their own problems, although there are elements that are exactly about that. It is about the broader question of how does Canadian society have to heal itself? How do we have to heal from our own collective ignorance about the history of our own country as regards our relationship with Indigenous peoples? And what do we have to do to make sure that we never slide back into that way of not knowing and that we use our new understanding in positive ways? And I think that that will help us, I think, um, understand much more... Um, um, I think the more we know about what has happened and indeed what we as a society have done in order to get the advantage over Indigenous peoples, to get the advantage in um, rounding up children so that we could maneuver to have access to more lands and more resources, the more we understand how those things fit together, the more I think we can start to be noble in our response to some of the very contemporary issues that we have about a fair share of resources, about equitable funding for education, about equitable funding for child welfare services, none of which are in fact realities in Canada right now. And uh, at what point do we stand up and, and speak up to our own values, which says that's not right, it wasn't right in the past, and it's certainly not right in the present.